today we are going to watch some video and we are going to react on the video so this video is about russia so welcome back to my show country review so today i am going to uh, react on russia with simon rib yes so it is mainly bbc reporter on the bbc series it is a moscow or uh, simon rib is the bbc reporter and in this video we are going to see that he is going to debunk all these myths and all these harmful things that we know about russia or russia is always look like a shady stuff going on there so this video will help us to know about Russia more and this uh, this video is from Graham Phillips channel so let's watch this video together check that so let's play the video it's heading north on the final part of my journey through the night to the heart of power in Russia Moscow that's right BBC Simon Reeve is here Russia's capital Moscow culminating his three-part Russia with Simon Reeve, ostensibly a travel documentary, and he's come here to Russia's capital, Moscow, ostensibly to show us Moscow. It is great. It's ten past six, and we are just running into the station. Have we just stopped in Moscow? So Russia's legendary, iconic capital city. Moscow, just an abundance, an amazing amount of things to show from here. So what's Simon going to show us? I'd never been to Moscow before. It was more beautiful than I'd imagined. Oh, this is the sense of power, Simon Reeves. absolute power. And Graham Phillips is so we get about ten Divan seconds Kings. of Moscow's beauty there, and then Simon's conclusion, of course, that absolute power is centered in Moscow. We hear a lot about the wealth of Russia and some Russians. In reality, it's in the hands of a few, as is the power and the privilege. That's what you have. Today, Moscow is a mega city. Okay, so a little more than 10 seconds of the beauty of Moscow there, but everything already starting to be rather drowned out by Simon's overt political agenda and views. Home to 12 million people. Ground flips, you are doing great, man. This video is cool. Not that everyone needs to be stuck in a jam. Can't argue with that. Moscow is indeed a mega city, and it's actually just full of such amazing, fun places. So Red Square is just over there. So where we are now, Periashi would call it a bridge, but it's really an observation point, newly constructed to give people the opportunity to come out here, uh, take selfies, just marvel at the beauty of the amazing views. We've got the Kremlin, cool, of Moscow city, over there, just absolutely awesome views and the atmosphere here is fun and people are enjoying themselves everyone's in the mood and just really friendly having a great time and uh, just such a cool place and there's so many of these places in Moscow just amazing places to show so where's Simon going why is he not showing us this it's right in the center where's he off to what's this lane in the middle of the road here Yes, where is Simon going? Close to the pinnacle of power. Now it's quieter at the moment. It's the weekend here in Moscow. But as we can see, there's traffic coming in to the centre and the Kremlin here. And there is indeed on this road a separate lane because much of the role of government is still fulfilled from right in the centre of Moscow, from even the Kremlin. So you can't have a situation where there's traffic jams here as they are and government officials and politicians unable to get to meetings and whatnot because of that. So because of that, you have this separate lane. It's nothing so sinister as Simon makes out. It's literally a lane for officials, politicians, and more yes. to get into Moscow it is debunked. in time. Not that big of a deal. Whoa. The roads are quite big, man. Big, big road. Look, who's that then? Is that somebody very important? <laughs> I was leaving the congested center of Moscow. I wanted to see where most people here actually live. So it's clear then we're not going to be seeing any of the other amazing, just the abundance of amazing things to see that can be shown from central Moscow 
and BBC Simon Reeves travel documentary. He's got something else in his mind and Simon is off to show us something else from Moscow. It's interesting actually, this is the sort of housing where so many Muscovites live, these massive apartment blocks. In principle, it's a noble aim to want to see how okay. people live and show on the BBC the reality of Moscow and not all of the hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of other things that we might have expected to see in a travel documentary about Moscow. Instead, to come way, way out to the north of the city, really have a look at the map a long way from the centre and show us the particular story of one person to show how supposedly real life is and all the rest of it. You know, that's a noble aim. You have to support that. But, you know, you wonder why this particular story has been chosen. There's also still a lot of people living in this type as well. These are known as Khrushchevkas. And actually now I'm at the exact place BBC Simon came to. And they're named after the former leader of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, who first announced in the 1950s that the Soviet Union was going to begin a program of housing construction, the like of which has never been seen before. He's getting all sentimental, which is quite something given he said it's his first time in Moscow, but there he is all being all sentimental. Well, for many Soviet families, many Russian families, these Khrushchevkas were their first family home. And actually, here's a brief extract of a very interesting report on the Khrushchevskas from Russian TV. With subtitles, have a look. What is the saying? I need full subtitle when? Cool video, man. Subscribe now. Subscribe. Охватила страну где-то в 58-м. Счастливые получатели ордеров смеясь расставались. Their housing also have so many things, man, to do in this video. Деревянные бараки прощались с коммуналками. Неведомое ранее острое чувство собственности воспевает сам великий Шостакович. As a result, many Soviet families, many Russian families, have very warm memories of these apartments. I liked my house, I didn't want to move, like a lot of people here. Um, but there was no choice, we had to move out. Well... So to put it in perspective, when the Khrushchevskas were constructed, much of Moscow would have looked just like that. In fact, they are there to this day. But this is also 2018, and this is modern Moscow. Cool man. Those buildings are cool. The sky crap on the kidney cord. Ground finish is doing great debunking all this thing man. Subscribe him and subscribe me man. Subscribe me now. The Russia looks great in this scene man. These drone shots are amazing. Simon, hello. 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 
Simon's nice wish I haven't got anything with you. Can we come in? Simon, of course you can come in. Your producer is this? this woman from over 12 million people in Moscow. She's been waiting for your prearranged visit, so of course you can come in. Natalia Botkovich works at a state-run theatre. So sweet. Look at that. What a lovely place you've got. You've got a grand piano in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> OK, so first off, Simon's leading with what an amazing place Natalia has. He's really wow. bigging up uh, Natalia's apartment. So what's he preparing us for? My papa and mama, you know, wanted Скоро я должна была появиться, и э, решили переехать сюда. Я здесь живу всю свою жизнь. Okay, so more, more. Natalia really loves her apartment. Okay, okay. And every little bit of it has memories and meaning to you. Эта квартира она родная для меня, и я не хочу отсюда никуда переезжать. Но, к сожалению, я чувствую, что скоро Okay, okay, so we're getting the idea here, BBC Simon, but it would be nice to have a bit of real journalism here. You've mentioned, I mean, she's mentioned her parents, obviously Natalia's a young woman, mentioned her parents, debunking her men. Parents, what's the story there, and why, in particular, BBC Simon, have you chosen this story out of the millions and millions of stories in Moscow that could be told? Why have you chosen this one? The government has passed legislation to demolish more than half of Moscow's Khrushchevkas. A population equivalent to San Francisco will be relocated to brand new high-rise apartments. Well, okay, it's wow. a moment when Simon's words and the music don't really match up. So there is a program and people are being rehoused in new apartments, but the music is still as sinister and kind of foreboding as ever. What? The world's biggest demolition was signed by the president with little public discussion and a stroke of a pen. Natalia has no grounds to appeal. The world's biggest demolition order was signed by the president with little public discussion and a stroke of a pen. Заснус какие-то 30 против. Может ли это как-то повлиять на то, чтобы нас сняли с программы? Не хотелось бы. Ответ на этот вопрос легко увидеть на портале Активный гражданин. Актуальные данные там по каждому дому. Алексей Шапошников проводит простые зачисления. Наталья has no grounds to appeal. Well, look, this is already cool, man. And how lovely, but Simon, if you would have taken just two minutes, even the time it takes to boil a kettle and gone online, then you would have seen for yourself that in Natalia's actual apartment block, they had a vote and 80% voted in favor of relocation. 80%. And you could have found that out yourself, Simon. Cool, man. Less than the time it takes for a cup of tea. Переезжать это какое-то насильственное переселение, похоже на фашизм. Now, there are, of course, different definitions of fascism, but surely, Natalia, when 80% in your block have voted for relocation and 20%, including yourself, have voted against, then letting the 20% decide rather than the 80% is surely more akin to fascism. I want That's to see right. what happened to Natalia. It's fascism, to man. Protest against her eviction. That's you. Yeah, it's me. I wanted to see what happened to Natalia, and she tried to protest against. Просто держала плакат. подошли люди в форме просто в грубой форме схватили меня и потащили к машине so you were standing this is unreal so you were standing protesting 
On your own or with a couple of other people? No, just on my own. Just on your own. Now, what you're doing here, Simon, I mean, this isn't honest, it's not ethical, it's not fair, it's certainly not journalism. It's some sort of a BBC campaign, it's some sort of activism from your side, anti-Putin, anti-Russia. And what I'm doing, I mean, this isn't about saying that Russia is ideal, it's, of course, the largest country in the world and it has its own issues, like any country has its own issues, but when it comes to the Russian legal system... Yes, that's right. All countries have issues. ...any other country in the world could only look on that in awe. Anyone who's involved in uh, the Russian legal process, all of their details are registered, they're easily referenceable, they're easily findable online. So we can see screenshots here and easily findable below. You can access the links and you can see all details pertaining to the case involving Natalia, which Simon is discussing now. If we have a look at this document here, this in fact is all of the particulars pertaining to the specific incident in question. And it clearly says here that Natalia was in a group of seven people. Now, of course, she's telling Simon, who's taking her word for it, that she was alone here in the Russian legal document. It says not only that she was in a group of seven uh, people, which is a breach of Russian law, but that she was repeatedly requested to stop. So what's the actual truth? Well, you know what, if Simon were doing the job of a journalist, he would ask Natalia about this, because this document, he could have easily found it just as I found it, just as you can look at it now, and you can see the link, as I say, again below. But, of course, Simon is not going to do that. He's not going to do anything of the sort. He's just going to take Natalia's word, because that is what makes Russia look bad, and that is all about what Simon is here in Moscow to do. So, on you go, Simon. Мне предстоит суд. Я думаю, и не один. А yes, проблема в том, что я работаю в государственном учреждении, cool. и, конечно же, там Russia, man, this is real Russia. We are seeing real Russia now from Graham Phillips' journalism. That's great. Oh my God! What is Simon Reeves is saying? Hello. 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 And by the way, when did Simon Reeve, who's typically positioned as an amiable globetrotter, become so interested in the issues of those facing housing relocation? And if so, then why couldn't Simon have started a bit closer to home? So here we are in the Northwold estate. We're in, the, in Clapton in the London borough of Hackney. What's happening is that Guinness Trust, who owns the um, who owns the estate. Um, it used to be a council, it was an LCC estate, then it was Hackney Council and in the stock transfers of the late 90s it was taken over by Clapton Community Housing Trust and now the Guinness Trust. Guinness Trust um, started by saying we're either going to demolish the whole estate and rebuild, we're going to do a partial redevelopment, knocking down a chunk of the estate and then rebuilding or we're just going to do just infill, building some of the gaps in the estate. And the purpose of this is to solve the housing crisis. That's what they said to us. Then they left us for three months all over the summer where we didn't know what their plan was going to be. And they pretended to consult with us, which they didn't do at all, and hit us with their plan, their preferred plan, which is to demolish about a third of the estate, 11 blocks altogether. 150 homes. The blocks that they want to demolish are family homes. They're really nice flats. Structurally, absolutely nothing wrong with them. People live in them. There's many generations of families who live in some of them. The authorities here say they're trying to replace substandard housing. Opponents think it's all a money-making exercise for the government and property developers who are given the lucrative contracts. It's cool, man, to watch all this as a real Russian man.
The demolition plan helped inspire a new wave of protest, with huge numbers of Russians taking to the streets in anti-corruption demonstrations. Many have been arrested. Lucrative contracts. The demolition plan helped inspire a new wave of protest. Demolition plan. Huge numbers of Russians taking to the streets in anti-corruption demonstrations. Well, what the big claim by Simon Rips. Russian law. Russian law requires protest by more than one person to have state approval. Natalia insists she was demonstrating alone. Now I know some of you will be watching and wondering uh, why didn't I go and bang in Natalia's door and ask why she was a part of this, this BBC propaganda report, this uh, misinformation, disinformation. Well, I'll tell you why in the first place is that Natalia comes across as an emotionally vulnerable person. She seems, to be honest, a bit touched. But in any case, she's dishonest. She has been used by the BBC, but she's also used the BBC for her own aims, which is that she wants to stay at all costs in her apartment, despite the overwhelming will of almost everyone else to be relocated. Natalia will do whatever it takes to stay okay. put, and she's used the BBC to that end. And also, she's had her say. What I would say to her is, of course, why were you part of something so dishonest and deceitful? In any case, I'm also a polite person and not one to just charge in a, a young woman's door and uh, shout yes, at the Grant Phillips, you are a polite person. As much as I would try okay. to control myself when it comes to these situations, of course, when you encounter that kind of dishonesty, it can uh, get you rather worked up. But well, the better thing to do, of course, is to channel that and to show you the reality. So let's have a look at these interviews from the ground. This is uh, from real people here, showing you, telling you in their own words the reality about the situation, because Natalia's had her say. So let's see what other people say. Let's see the reality from the ground here in Moscow. I can't be a nurse, it's okay for me. Хорошо. Да? Конечно, одно значит новые дома выйти, коммуникации и все. Видите, все живут много таких. Ну, в домах они, квартиры небольшие, то есть узенькие, там семьи растут, нужно какое-то расширение. И всех пере, ну, переселяют в крупную, ну, в такие квартиры сами все больше живут. Ну, mm -hmm. и, конечно, это удобно, потому что сейчас Россия на подъеме, все рожают детей, большие семьи, mm -hmm. ну и, конечно, это здорово, если переселять. И они были снести Крушевского, финцы. Ну, собираются, но пока не сносят. А как вы относитесь к этому? В принципе, нормально. Мам? Ну да, мне без разницы. Я молодое поколение, вот такие против. Она она тоже все равно. Я тоже все равно. Ну, не знаю тогда. Ну, они старые, уже пора снести. So that was the word from the street, as it really is, and as we can see, the overwhelming consensus and that with everyone I spoke to, you saw them in interview, those that had an opinion were in favour of the demolition and relocation. But there's a nuance, of course, that people said it had been uh, stated it was going to happen for many years. Nothing's happened, nothing around is happening. At the moment, we can see there's no signs of any demolition in place. So the nuance is that in any yes. case, it would seem that even Although the overwhelming majority are in favour, there's no immediate signs of it happening. So there's no immediate uh, cause for Natalia to be so uh, emotional as she is. unspoken agreement here between President Putin and the Russian people. It goes something like, I will give you jobs, what? a bit of money, you'll have a chance to buy stuff and occasionally take a foreign holiday. Jobs, a bit of money, you'll have a chance to buy stuff and occasionally take a foreign holiday. But don't question my power. That agreement is now starting to break down. Russians are saying, we've had enough. What the hell? 
Simon is struggling. Being treated like sheep. We want to know where Russia's wealth is going. What? Appropriate enough. It's a storm coming. So that was that from the Khrushchevskas. So beloved by BBC Simon Reeve. The reality versus what Simon rather predictably showed us. But enthusiastically, it must be said, Simon as a BBC tool really went for it. But he's come unstuck because what you've seen is the reality. Of course, what Simon showed you was BBC propaganda. I hope you agree the reality, the truth, wins out. So put a like, a comment, watch other videos. You can support, of course, my crowdfunding to make this independent, completely crowdfunded journalism possible. And in any case, thanks very much for watching. This is Graham from Moscow. Looking forward to seeing you soon for another exclusive video report. And the main thing is the truth. Anti propaganda reality I headed west out of Moscow whoa the shorts are great man it looks good the city looks great in these shorts, yes! So th that's it. So if you want to see the whole video about this documentary in full form, so you have to go to Graham Fields channel and I'm going to leave the description in the below, in the comment, uh, in the description box link in the description box so you can just go and see this whole video of uh, Graham Phillips and there are so many amazing video of Graham Phillips so go and watch those videos and you will have a great time I think and you will enjoy the show man so it is going to be a great moment for you guys so Graham Phillips this, this debunking was great and it is cool so and Thank you to all of all of them who have watched this video till now and thank you for watching and also subscribe to my channel and share this video to your friends and family members and thank you for watching that's it i'm not going to say anymore anything just subscribe now and write in the comment box what you want next and share this video to your friends and family members peace man subscribe now that's it subscribe and subscribe to Graham Phillips channel peace Russians subscribe